Monday, a petition was tabled by MP Brad Viz regarding an eagle poaching case that led to charges being dropped against 13 First Nations men after nearly a decade of court battles with evidence of wrongdoing, um, including uh, conspiracy to prosecute innocent people, fabrication of evidence, concealment of evidence, including perjury, and trespassing on Indigenous lands. Are you considering conducting a public inquiry into the injustices committed by the BC Conservation Service and BC Prosecution Service in this case? Look, I look forward to seeing the petition uh, that, that, has, that has been introduced by Mr. Viz. I've spoken with Chief Leon in 2021. I understand the impact uh, that that this has had on him and on and on other Indigenous leaders and on the Indigenous communities. Um, at the federal level, my role is uh, is the, the curation of the criminal law, and so we, we we pass criminal laws. The application, the administration of justice, lies within the hands of the province. Uh, same is true uh, in this case with with uh, with the conservation authority. Uh, and, the, and the statutes that guide them. So, uh, I, each, each area has their own respective areas of authority. I'm always open, obviously, uh, to looking at uh, how we might improve uh, the areas within my jurisdiction and how we might better ensure that uh, areas within, working with the provinces, how, how uh, areas within their jurisdiction are better applied. Uh, but certainly I understand the impact. National inquiry, though, that is something that would certainly fall under your, your purview. Well, let me look at uh, let me look at when it gets to me and uh, see what the proposed parameters are, and then I can come back to you. What is your message to those men who say that their lives have been impacted quite a bit because of this? I have I have said this to Chief Leon personally. I understand I understand that impact. I understand the importance of eagles and eagle feathers uh, to their their tradition and to their ceremony. Uh, and the, both both the substantive and symbolic of po importance of that, and and so we'll work to try to find a solution. Okay, thank you, thank Minister you. Lametti. Thank you. Do you have any concern about the uh, violence that the, the situation that happened with uh, Leader Singh yesterday in Peterborough? Do you have any concern about the rising and escalating rhetoric that is coming towards politicians of all stripes across the country? Very concerned. Uh, look, that should that should never happen. Uh, that's intolerable in our, in our system uh, for anybody, not just not just the leader of a political party. But I, I certainly extend my my support and my sympathy to to Jagmeet Singh. Uh, I think nobody should have to go through that. Um, he's out there. He's putting his his, uh, his frankly his his neck out there in in the political world, uh, for lack of a better metaphor. Uh, he is he's exposing himself in in the realm of public ideas for 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 public service. And we should be rewarding that. We should be lauding that, and not and not allowing these kinds of attacks. Our government is putting forward. Uh, you know, we we, we have uh, uh, promised in our mandates. It's in Minister Mendicino's mandate letter, but working with me and others, uh, to attack hate speech, to attack uh, hate speech online, and so. It is part of a culture that we need to we need to try to push back and against. Do you think what happened yesterday would constitute hate speech? I have to look at the actual words. Uh, I, I, as you know, I generally don't give legal advice uh, in public. Uh, I would have to look at the situation, but certainly it's troubling, and we need we need to all act together. I've seen it happen with my colleagues. Uh, it has happened to some extent uh, with me. I've seen it with my colleagues uh, of all political stripes at a number of different levels. Now I've known. Uh, I've had this conversation with people at the municipal level, good, good female candidates who decided not to put their names forward because of this. And so we need to do something about this as a society. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Greg, what about what happened to Mr. Singh yesterday? And you were brought up at the security committee, or your worries about these, this action and what can be done to prevent it? Yeah, um, you know, I brought that up uh, during our study on ideologically motivated violent extremism. And I made the point that this is not the first time it's happened to Mr. Singh, right? He had that interruption in 2017. The man tried to arrest him in 2020, and then we had this. And I think during the course of our committee study, you know, there's just been this undercurrent uh, or worry about how all of this stuff online and what people are hearing, like being trapped in their own little echo chambers, when it's actually going to manifest itself physically. You know, I'm quite confident in his ability to handle himself. But he was swarmed by people. Uh, they were calling. They were saying, "I hope you die." Uh, they were calling him a traitor. They were using all kinds of expletives. And uh, you know, I'm just really worried about the trajectory our country is taking when 
that kind of stuff is happening against elected officials. Do you think we need to have more protection for parliamentarians and elected officials with, with stuff like this happening? We did hear from the RCMP. They were one of our witnesses. They said they're going to look at that incident and they're going to be exploring it further. But I think, you know, that's, that's just treating the symptom um, or the result of it. And um, I think, you know, part of our study is finding out what's causing people to do this. And we need to do far more uh, intervention in the prevention side of things, more community-based programs, better mental health access, and just really try and get to the root causes of IMV. Okay, thanks yeah. so much. Okay, cheers. Thank you. What did we do today last night? You know what? I enjoyed it, obviously. I thought uh, the beginning of it, where they were asking about people's favorite, you know, authors and uh, whatnot, I didn't really understand that. What does that have to do with being Prime Minister? But the rest of it was lively, and I think there was a good exchange of ideas. What was it most? Well, you know, I thought uh, when the candidates were able to pick who they wanted to deb debate against, uh, that's very interesting. And I thought there was a, um, a balanced amount of time for everybody. Uh, that's what they'll decide September 10th. Do you think that even the should be in place at well, you know what, it's, it's happened before and certainly I think that uh, we've got to do something to quit printing money. It's really, in, you know, inflaming the inflation situation and we have to address that. Oh yeah! Oui, euh, oui. Qu'est-ce que vous en avez pensé? Que vous trouvez que c'était plus... Euh, bah, donc, le, le ton était, était, était mieux? Le ton pas... était pas mal meilleur hier. Je pense qu'à un moment donné, il faut, euh, faut, faut, faut tempérer un petit peu parce que on, a, on veut entendre comme faut qu'est-ce que... Les candidats ont à dire comme point de vue, et puis euh, l'autre semaine, c'était un peu là, le chaos. Vous avez assez de temps, je crois, pour répondre. Certains critiques que c'était des réponses courtes, difficiles d'aller dans les enjeux profondeurs. C'est que le, le, la formule est peut-être un peu particulière. En tout cas, moi, c'est la première fois que je voyais ce genre de formule-là. Mais je me dis, je, en tout cas, j'ai hâte de voir là, du côté de, de Laval là, dans deux semaines. Est-ce que ça sera la même formule On ne sait pas. Là, mais... On va voir là, on va être capable de se faire encore une meilleure idée euh, lors du prochain. Là. M. Pouliot, qui remplacerait le, le gouverneur de la Banque du Canada, vous en pensez quoi, vous? Est-ce qu'il est responsable de l'inflation et si on, on, on devrait se rendre là? Sur cet enjeu-là, je pense qu'il faut juste faire attention. Là, dans, les, dans, les, dans, les, dans, les, dans les propos que l'on tient, là, il y a quand même... Là, C'est quand même une institution, la Banque du Canada. Faut, si on ne veut pas, en fin de compte, là, euh, faire peur euh, à nos euh, éventuels investisseurs. Il faut, faut y aller de façon un peu plus euh, modérée. Merci, Bonne journée. Est-ce que vous un commentaire sur la poursuite des critères? Euh, ben, en fait, peut-être rapidement, mais bon, vous avez vu la, la décision de la Cour d'appel de, de l'Alberta sur l'évaluation environnementale qui dit qu'on en fait beaucoup trop en matière d'évaluation environnementale. Et de l'autre côté, il y a des écologistes qui disent qu'on n'en fait pas assez. Nous, on essaie de naviguer dans tout ça pour trouver le juste milieu et faire avancer le Canada en matière d'évaluation environnementale. Est-ce que ça provient d'un groupe que vous avez, vous avez confondé? Est-ce que vous trouvez ça quand même personnellement particulier? Je ne peux pas commenter, évidemment, parce que c'est devant les tribunaux, mais lorsque j'étais chez Équiterre, j'ai moi-même poursuivi le gouvernement à plusieurs reprises. Je ne m'attends pas à ce qu'on me fasse des traitements de faveur parce que maintenant, je suis au gouvernement. Merci.